Greg, you satisfied coming back? That year's layoff didn't hurt you any, did it? Did it hurt me any? Yeah. Uh, no, I, I feel like it helped me a lot. Uh, my approach to the game is a lot different this year than it ever has been. And, um, of course, you start playing football as young as I did, and you never sit in stands. Greg Platts, he was a standout for the Longhorns in the 60s and 70s, played on a national championship team. At one point, he was a Southwestern Conference Player of the Year. He died in 2015 at the age of 66. Scientists at the time classified him with stage 4 CTE, a neurological condition spurred by, the re by repeated head trauma. He put in a lot of time with both my brother and I. For Christmas, we always made homemade Christmas ornaments. We made homemade Halloween costumes. I did not grow up in the cookie cutter house. Like I was the girl with the weird artist dad. He was very talented, creative. He taught school for 40 years. He was just like the life of the party. He was very gregarious. He was weird. He was like always telling stories. He talked so much. He it literally just constantly telling stories and jokes. He couldn't talk like he used to and he loved to talk. Talk, 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 talk. So that was a sure sign that something was kind of off. The last 10 years of his life, this disease changed him. And really the last two years were the worst. It was 2013 and he was very confused. He could only do a puzzle that was marked for a three-year-old. Um, he couldn't talk. It was just all gibberish. He was very angry and like confused. Um, he would like open the door while my aunt was driving. I mean, it's a full-time job to take care of this person and, and constantly entertain them. And then also like the drugs are making him paranoid and he doesn't know what's happening. He was a lost soul. And one day he looked at me across the table and he said, Deb, please help me. I don't want to be like this. So he knew he was losing his mind. First legal battle connecting football and the brain disease that you've probably heard about by now, CTE, is going to happen in Dallas this week. We'll all be watching, but the nation will be watching too. Football was such a fundamental part of their lives and, and how they got together. And I think there was sort of a denial mentality for a while of we just don't want to believe that, you know, playing football, playing a game he loved is what, what caused this. There are so many awful details that like you know she was struggling with like would he want to be exposed like this and she was very afraid of being seen as like someone who was just doing it for the money he spent their entire life savings and more on his care and trying to do everything she could and you know and even more than that like her time and her life his damage was one of the worst they'd seen in a college player at that age. He had the most severe case of CTE in a college player that Boston University had seen. We spent over a million dollars to get the Pletz case ready. Um, and the other factor is, if you're trying to prove somebody has CTE, there's only one way to do it. They have to die. You heard things like, the NCAA has always done the right things, or the players knew about CT, or CT is a brand new phenomenon, or maybe folks want to ban football. I'm here to tell you that that's not the evidence in this case, none of those things. You're going to see a paper published by Dr. Harrison Markland about CTE, also known at the time as dementia pugilistica, or punch drop syndrome. Ninety years ago, the NCAA had access to this literature. And the evidence will show you the NCAA did nothing with that. Greg Pletz knowingly took the risk that he might break a leg or tear up his knee or dislocate his shoulder. He didn't take on the risk that he was going to die from a brain injury 30 years later that nobody told him was a possibility.
football college players at Georgia and other universities have filed lawsuits against the NCAA and their former conferences over how their concussions were treated. NCAA is facing a new round of lawsuits over head injuries on the football field. Thousands of people suing the NCAA, alleging the association failed to protect college players from head injuries for decades. A Boston University study of former football players' brains donated to the Brain Bank found degenerative brain disease known as chronic traumatic encephalopathy, or CTE, associated with concussions and other head trauma in 91% of the former college players' brains. Five of 12 linebackers from USC's 1989 team have died before the age of 50. And not one shred of evidence suggests that low-level CTE, which he was diagnosed with by the BU Center, causes hypertension. No evidence. There is nothing the NCAA could have done that would have changed the unfortunate and tragic end of Mr. B's life. Nothing. Most colleges, most NFL businesses, they don't want to recognize CTE because it may hurt their revenue, hurt the sport, and I understand that. But it's such a serious issue, everybody's hiding their head in the sand. The money part is really an issue because corporations that's what they know i mean that's what what matters to them there is no justice because justice would be greg pletz would be alive and teaching art again i want integrity and honesty in the process i want people that do wrong to be held accountable publicly and that a commit to change and disclosure take place i think more than like kind of the money and like the justice for him. My personal opinion, and I think part of what my aunt's decision was about was like, um, hopefully getting more information and more um, attention on this so that it doesn't happen. If he could have chosen to be here with me, my mother, my brother and the grandchildren, he would choose us for sure.